Hi friends, welcome back uh, on the another video of uh, supervised learning. Today we will see the logistic regression, right? So basically we will try to understand with the one problem statement. So the problem statement is we will use logistic regression to model the Pima Indian diabetes. So this is the data set back. Basically, I will provide the link in the description as well. So this model will predict which people are likely to develop diabetes. Okay. So uh, this data set is originally from the national institute of diabetes and uh, digestive and kidney diseases basically so the objective of the data set is to diagnostically uh, predict whether uh, or not a patient has diabetes right based on certain uh, diagnostic uh, measurements included uh, in the data set so several constraint were placed on the selection of these instances from a larger uh, database in particular all patient here are females at least 21 years old of pima indian heritage so let's start with doing uh, line by line so the first is uh, we are importing libraries so that is numpy pandas uh, right numpy for uh, numpy numpy for linear algebra uh, right all the numerical operations pandas for data uh, processing like csv file including io or read csv and all uh, then we are importing matplotlib pyplot as plt so this is basically for plotting our data right and similarly seaborn is also for the same next thing we are loading and reviewing the data so uh, to load the data we are pd dot read csv and this is the csv file i'll also provide in the link now we are getting the shape that is 768 row and nine columns right next thing is we have uh, p data dot head so to check first five row of the data right so it will return top five elements and then we are checking if there are any null values in the data so p data dot is null dot value dot any so if from this we will get the uh, whether there is null or not right so the any function will return uh, true and false then what we are doing is we are uh, excluding outcome column which has only uh, the p data right so what we are getting is we are having a list of p data right from 0 to minus 1 and then uh, we are uh, making a histogram of 100 bins and this is the figure size and the layout so you can see that this is the uh, p data uh, histogram so for class prag press is mass paddy skin test right so this will uh, return the values basis on this column now we are identifying the correlation in data so of course to get the correlation we normally use core function so it will basically show the correlation matrix right or we can see the matrix over row versus column and column versus rows uh, respectively next thing is however we want to see correlation in graphical representation so blue is function for that so this is a plot dot core right so we are passing our data frame or size for the uh, correlations now the correlation is basically df dot core function right so we are getting the correlation in this core variable figure and axis we are uh, passing for subplots and then we are uh, telling the match of for this correlation x stick we are providing and y stick we are also providing that right and finally if we plot the correlation you can see that uh, the correlation between them so let's see what are the observation here so basically in this above plot yellow color represent maximum correlation and blue color represent minimum correlation we can see none of the variable have correlation with any other variable so this you can see the maximum correlation and uh, the blue uh, here you can see that here here right it, it is blue so the correlation is very less here here as well age and skin and plaque and skin so if you also see that uh, age and uh, skin so the very less correlation and plaque and uh, skin also the very less correlations right next thing we are uh, plotting a pair plot for uh, this uh, p data right so here you can see that how nicely it has plotted all the aspect of the data 
now calculate diabetes ratio of true false from outcome variable so here what we will get is we will getting uh, we are getting and true and false right to uh, get the true value and false value basis on the class right printing the number of true cases okay and printing the number of false cases so here you can see that we have uh, gotten the true cases as 268 now we are getting the percentile using the formula to get the percentile so this will return 34.90 percent and number of false cases is 500 so if we convert that into percentile it will return 65.1 percent so we have uh, 34 4.9 percent people in current data set who have diabetes and rest of 65.1 percent doesn't have diabetes okay so it is a good distribution or we can say true false cases of diabetes in data now splitting the data so we will use 70 percent of data for remaining uh, training and 30 percent for testing this is how we will split our train test data so to get that train test split we call our uh, scale on dot model selection right so from model selection we will get that train test split now x data will be our p data dot uh, drop we are dropping class and rest will be our uh, x right so predictor feature column of 18 to m y data we are only containing the class that right so x will contain all columns except the class and uh, y will contain uh, the class column only to predict the class right now x train y train x test y test so that we will get train test split we are passing x y then we are uh, giving the size so this is basically the size of our train uh, data so, right train in test data so we can assume that if we are passing test size is 0.3 percent that is 30 percent so that means 30 percent is for testing okay and remaining 70 percent will be as stated here for training and where our random state is also one now uh, where random state is nothing but random runs right so here we are uh, giving the integer as one so uh, x train dot head so this is what we will get the head of our x train right now let's split uh, of data so uh, if we check the split of data so here again we are printing uh, the format of length x train right divided by length p data dot index multiplied by 100 so this will basically return the data uh, of a training set of data in percent so this is what we get 69.92 similarly uh, for test set it will uh, return the 30.08 percent now let's check diabetes true false ratio in split data so what we will do is we will print uh the all the statements so here you can see that we are styling uh, our print statement so original diabetes true value so here uh, you can see that we are getting this from uh, p data log p data of particular class if that is equals to one right and length uh, p data dot log p data class one if that is equals to one so uh, that is for true basically right all the true value divided by length of p data dot index to get the percentile value similarly for false value so here you can see that we are defining as zero zero at the both place so now uh, we will get the original then we will get the training then we will get the test so here you can see that original data uh, diabetes true values are 268 original diabetes false values are 500 and training diabetes true values are 183 and training diabetes false values are 354 right and similarly goes for tested diabetes true values and touch diabetes false values now next thing we are doing is data preparation so checking hidden missing values first so as we check missing values earlier but haven't got any right i hope you remember that we used any function there but there can be lots of entries with zero values we must need to take care of those values so what we'll do is again we are uh, checking the x train dot head top uh, five value then we can see that lots of zeros are here this zero this zero this zero this zero so basically this is not useful for our case now we can replace zero with serial mean right so what we will do is we will import uh, the impute function from uh, from sklearn and we will do simple imputer so let's say in simple imputer we are passing missing values as zero and strategy as mean right here we are telling that 
in column just take x train dot all column in x train take pd dot data frame uh, rep0 dot fit transform of x train and rep0 dot fit transform of x test right so this is how you will get x train and x test then x train dot column will have columns and x test dot column will have columns right so both the columns will be in our x train and x test so finally if we get the x train dot head so you can see that from this uh, and this 8 and 9 9 all the values have been replaced by the mean because we uh, just did here simple imputer right so simple imputer just replace that uh, 0 0 with mean so at the position of uh, 1 1 and uh, 4 1 so at 1 1 you can see that the mean value and 4 1 you can see that the mean value now let's apply our main concept that is logistic regression so what we will do is we are importing our matrix and we are getting the logistic regression from our linear model right that is in sklearn first we will fit the model on train then uh, what we will do is in model variable we are having fitting the logistic regression solver in lib linear right and then model dot fit we are passing x train and y train predict and own test so y predict will be our model dot predict on the basis of this x test that we have now coefficient difference that will be pd dot data frame model dot coefficient right and coefficient d f in intercept that will contain model dot intercept so finally if you print the coefficient dot df so you can see that this is how our logistic regression have been performed on this data so all the 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 and 7 finally in intercept so the intercept value you can see that minus 4.98 3 now uh, if we check the model score so model dot score x test dot, uh, and y test right and print the model score so this is 77 percent that we get right and if we try to plot that in heat map so cm equals to matrix dot confusion matrix so basically we are getting the confusion matrix in y of y test y predict level of 10 right and then df of cm equals to pd dot data frame cm so index will be our uh, i for i in 1 and 0 column will be i for i in predict 1 and predict 0 and finally we are plotting the figure in the heat map so here you can see that predict 1 is this predict 0 is this so for 0 predict 1 it is 14 for 1 that is true predict 1 is 48 but if we talk about 0 so for predict 0 0 it is uh, in the somewhat log values and for predict 0 1 it is 37 so if we conclude our confusion matrix so the true positive uh, or we can see that we correctly predict that they have uh, diabetes 80 right so oh, sorry uh, we correctly predict that they do have diabetes 48 the true negative is telling that we correctly predict the diabetes at 132 that's right so that is we correctly predict that they don't have diabetes 132 the false positive that is telling that okay we incorrectly predict that they do have diabetes or type 1 error that is 40 falsely predict positive and type 1 error and finally if that is false negative so we can say that we incorrectly predict that they don't have diabetes type 2 error 37 falsely predict ne uh, negative type 2 error right so this is how we apply the logistic regression in uh, diabetes prediction whether the patient have diabetes or not so basically yeah this was a model for uh, the whether our final model of logistic regression will predict which people are likely to have diabetes on certain data right uh, so the data is basically our class that uh, the variable for x train and y train to segregate that so yeah friend this was all about the logistic regression we will come up with uh, another videos of all the topics right stay tuned all the best. Thanks.